Hello! Today's video is going to be a bit of a different one because I am actually going to be showing you my bookshelves. Now I have two bookshelves, one in my living room and one in here in my spare bedroom where I film. I'm not going to show you every single book on my shelf, I'm not going to pull all of the books out because I've seen a lot of videos like that and I really enjoy watching them but quite honestly I don't think my editing skills are quite up to that just yet um, but I did really want to put a bookshelf tour out there so I am just going to show you my shelves, show you how they're set up and tell you the names of all of the books on my shelves and whether or not I have read them and I'm going to jump right into it. Okay, so this is the first of my two bookcases and this is just an overview of them. I will be taking you through each shelf, maybe apart from the bottom two, but I'll get to why on those later. This bookshelf is in my living room, so I don't generally film in front of this one because as you can see, it has glass doors that close like that. There's one on either side and they're really quite reflective so it's very difficult to film in front of them plus the lighting in here isn't fantastic as you will see from this video clip but hopefully you'll be able to get a general feeling of what's on these shelves. I'll give a general overview so up here on the top shelf we've got uh, some recipe books and some knitting books and general non-fiction guide book type things. On this second shelf here we have more of the general standalone fiction, some of it's fantasy, some of it is non-fiction. Then on this shelf here we have some fiction series, most of them fantasy, ditto on the next shelf down and ditto on the next shelf down and then down here on this shelf we have some of my books from when I was a child and the bottom shelf is all just filing and paperwork and boring stuff that I won't bother boring you with. Okay, so this top shelf to start off with, like I said before, I'm not going to show you each and every individual book, I'm just going to give you a general overview. So on this side I have a baking book, knitting book, some history books, another baking book, another knitting book, a Hunger Games, Catching Fire, official illustrated movie companion, um, more baking, more baking, more baking, and more baking. A couple of items that I painted with my granddad when I was younger, in fact I think he painted this one and I painted that one. Then just some general, there's a facts book there, there's a couple of recipe books there, my guidebook for Venice from my holiday there. Then on this middle section we have got a couple of joke books, a dictionary, a law dictionary, guidebook for Tokyo etc and on this side Lee's Lego book and then more recipe books, more recipe books, more recipe books, more recipe books and a planet earth book. Now we start to get into the fiction section and these are all standalone books on this shelf. This is a general overview. Um, the majority of these I have not read and in fact the majority of books in this bookcase I probably haven't read. Most of my red books and TBR books are on my other bookcase but I'll show you that at some point. So just move those out of the way. So we've got Russell Brand's Bookie Wook which is his um, autobiography which I have not read. The Angel's Game by Carlos Ruiz Afon. I think I did read that when I was younger but I honestly don't remember anything about it. Wolf on the Plains by Con Igweldon. Love Tanya by Tanya Burr. A lovely cloth bound classics version of Jane Eyre and then Four which is the companion book to the Divergent series. Apologies if there's shaky camera work here as well, I am holding the camera because there is absolutely no way that I could mount a tripod to film this video. I'll show you the items 
at the end as well. So in this centre section we have the copy of Romeo and Juliet that I read for school and it's probably got some annotations and things in there but nothing particularly interesting. The Earthsea Quartet by Ursula Le Guin. I do actually want to read that, but I haven't yet. Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk, which I did read and wasn't a massive fan of, so I haven't continued the series. The World According to Clarkson, that's one of Lee's books. Star Seeker by Tim Bowler, I haven't read. Ballet Shoes for Anna by Noel Streetfield, I did read when I was younger, but I can't remember anything about it. Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason by Helen Fielding, which I have read. Cathedral of the Sea by Ildelfonso Falcones, which I have not read. Uh, the Crow Starver by Dick King Smith, which I did read, again, can't remember anything about it. And Radiance by Alison Noel, which I have not read. Moving on to this section here, we have the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. We have Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, both of which I have tried and failed to read, but I will probably try again at some point. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, which I have read, but again, a long time ago, can't remember. Kathy Reich, Deja Dead. Again, read, can't remember. But I did like it, so I picked up Kathy Reich's Death Du Jour and then proceeded to not read that one, so that was helpful of me. Um, then we have The Creatures in the Case by Garth Nix, Dark Fire by CJ Samson, Polar Shift by Clive Cussler, The Hounds of Morrigan by Paul O'Shea, and The Fireside Book which is a book of poetry and I have not read any of those. And then over here, we have the diary of a young girl, Anne Frank, which I have tried to read, but it didn't get very far. Um, it's really quite depressing and I think I was a bit too young when I tried to read it. So I might try and read it again, but probably not because I don't like reading sad things. Um, Tricks of the Mind by Darren Brown, which I have not read. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, which I have not read but I want to because I really enjoyed the film. Another book of Lee's Clarkson and another thing, The World According to Clarkson Volume 2. The Host by Stephanie Meyer, which I have read and I did like. The Double Life of Cassiel Road Knight by Jenny Valentine, I have not read. Cliff McNish, oh no, Savannah Gray by Cliff McNish, which I have not read. The Alchemist's Secret by Scott Mariani, which I also have not read. And the items on this shelf, I have this cute cat Russian doll, a candle, a 3D game of noughts and crosses, a Rubik's Cube, a owl candle, this doll face that my grandma got me from Singapore, and this ornament, I suppose. <laughs> and that's it for this shelf. This next shelf down is one of my favourites in terms of the look of the shelf. So I'm not going to pull all of the items out here because there's quite a lot going on, but here I have my full series of Harry Potter, so we've got the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets is there, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows, and The Cursed Child. I have my Time Turner here, my DA pin, a Weasley's Wizard Weezes uh, badge there on a Hogwarts lanyard with a Hogwarts pin and a Pirates of the Caribbean pin there, and my... Severus Snape wand. Yes, I am a fan of Severus Snape. Yes, I know that he's a very troubling character, but also his wand is really nice. So there's that. Um, Breaking Dawn, Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse by Stephanie Meyer, and I also have the New Moon and Twilight movie companion books. Also at the bottom here, I have the little 
uh, guidebook. You can't really see it, but it's the guidebook from the Har Harry Potter studio tour that I went to with Lee last year. Here I have my Meg Cabot The Mediator series, books one through six, which I absolutely loved in my teenage years and have reread multiple times and I'm considering rereading this year as well. Then we have my various copies of The Symphony of Ages by Elizabeth Hayden that I've acquired over the years. Basically, I had a full copy when I was younger and I lent some of them to a friend and they were never returned. So now I have a bit of a mishmash of various copies. So I have a paperback copy of Destiny here, which is book three, and a paperback copy of Prophe Prophecy here which is a book two, but I don't have book one in paperback. I then have Requiem for the Sun, Elegy for a Lost Star, and The Assassin King, which are books four, five, and six in paperback. And then back here I have hardback copy of Rhapsody and Prophecy. I only have a paperback version of Destiny because I haven't been able to find a hardback copy. I then have hardback versions of Elegy and Requiem, which are books four and five, but I don't have a hardback copy of The Assassin King, and as you will see, The Assassin King is a completely different cover to the others because the publishers decided to change the cover designs halfway through, and actually books seven, eight, and nine have a completely different cover again, which is extremely frustrating, and I don't know why publishers do that, and it's really annoying. And then I have books one, two, three, four, and five of the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. And I just have them lined up like this because honestly, it's a lot of books with a lot of pages and I couldn't find them anywhere else to fit. And I actually quite like having them stacked like that. In terms of items, I have a candle holder with a half burned candle in it, a puzzle box, a fan that I picked up in Tokyo and we already looked at the Harry Potter stuff and that is it for this shelf. Sorry that that one is a little bit dark but hopefully you were able to follow that. Finally we are on to my favourite shelf of this bookshelf which just has the most beautiful look to it. I really love the way I've got the books laid out on this shelf and it's the main one I can see when I'm sat on my sofa so I really enjoy the look of this one. So starting off over here we have my collection of Tolkien books. So here in the corner we have Tales of the Perilous Realm, then we have The Children of Hurin. I'm just going to move this one out of the way for a moment. Then we have my illustrated copy of The Hobbit, and then we have The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King, which is the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, or if you ask some people, the Lord of the Rings book, because it was originally meant to be one book, and then the publishers split it into three. Then we have The Silmarillion and The unfinished tales. Now I have read The Hobbit a few times and I I didn't mention on the shelf before actually, just quickly, I've read all the Harry Potter books, I've read all of the Twilight and Mediator books, I've read all of the Elizabeth Hayden Symphony of Ages books but I haven't read The Wheel of Time. Um, I haven't read The Lord of the Rings in full um, but I have given books one and two a go on a couple of occasions. I haven't read any of those other books by Tolkien other than The Hobbit, like I said. Um, these books were gifted to me by a friend and they're really lovely, so I've kept hold of them because maybe I'll appreciate them a bit more one day, but right now it's not really my thing. Then I have a copy of The Riddle by Alison Crogan, which was also gifted to me, but I haven't read it because it's actually, I think, either book two or three in a series. So I do have this series on my list to read, but obviously I will have to pick up book one and possibly book two before I get there. Just on top here, we have a couple of really cute cards that I am keeping in case I ever have need of them. 
Next to the Tolkien books, I have one of my favourite series of all time, which is the Black Magician trilogy, books one, two and three. That's the Magician's Guild, the Novice and the High Lord. Yes, I have read them. Yes, they are five stars and I am hoping to do a reread this year, possibly on audiobook. Philip Pullman, The Tiger and the Well, that's a historical fiction book that I was not a huge fan of, but yes, I did read it. Um, this is a baseball that I got from my very first visit ever to Disneyland Paris, and this is just a really cute bookmark that I will probably never actually use because it's really quite delicate and I don't want it to get damaged and I'm a bit precious like that. Over on this side we have Summer Wars Part 1 and 2, which are manga, which I haven't yet read, but again, I do want to. That's just a little Japanese doll. I don't know what it's called, but anyway. Then we have The Alchemist, The Magicians, oh no, The Magician, The Sorceress, The Warlock, and those are all books in the Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel series by Michael Scott. I have definitely read book one, two and three, but I can't remember whether I've read book four. And I know that there are more books in this series out. So I will eventually at some point get back round to rereading these first three, possibly rereading four if I have in fact read it and finishing the series because I did enjoy it. Um, it's just, it was one of those that the books were still coming out when I was reading them and when I was younger I didn't really have the patience for that. Um, but they're all out now so there's no excuse. This is the Wind on Fire series by William Nicholson. So we have book one, The Wind Singer, book two, Slaves of the Mastery, and book three, Fire Song. These are books that I read when I was younger and I reread them multiple times and really enjoyed them and will probably continue to reread them for years to come because they're quite fun. Over here we have the Bartamius trilogy, so the Amulet of Samarkand, the Golem's Eye and Ptolemy's Gate by Jonathan Stroud. I have not read these, they look like they've been read, that's because they were gifted to me by a friend who had read them and didn't want to keep them. Um, and I want to read them, I just haven't got round to it as yet. Then behind those we have The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. So we have Aragon at the top and then I think it goes Eldest, Brisinger and Inheritance, which I don't know why I've got them around in that order. That's really annoying. And I have the feeling that I've read Aragon, Eldest and Brisinger but not Inheritance or maybe I've... I can't remember. But I enjoyed this series when I first read it when I was younger. So again, it's the same situation as with the Immortal Nicholas Flamel, the Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel series, which is that they were coming out while I was reading them and I just didn't have the patience to wait for them to all come out. So I will probably return to this series, reread them all and finish the series off. And that is it for my most aesthetically pleasing shelf in my opinion. Okay, and now we come to the last shelf that I am properly going to show you. So we'll start at this end. We have The Best of Times by Penny Vincenzi, which is a contemporary book that I have indeed read and I actually really enjoyed. It follows the lives of people following an accident on a motorway and how they're all their lives all end up intertwined and we're all intertwined to begin with. It's a really interesting book actually and I'm planning on rereading that at some point. This is Going to Hurt by Adam Kay which made it into my top five of 2018. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones which is my favourite film of all time but the book was just okay. Studio Ghibli this is just sort of a guidebook to the history of Studio Ghibli which I have yet to fully read but I do want to flick through it. Then we have White Sand Volumes 1 and 2, Arcanum Unbounded, Warbreaker and Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, A Dark Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows and A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab, 
all of which I have read. Then we have these little books here which are Dark Days by James Baldwin and three Japanese short stories by various authors which I have also read. Meteorite Strike by A.G. Taylor which is an arc that I think I got when I was in school but I don't think that I've read it or at least I don't remember reading it. Then we have The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance and Oathbringer all also by Brandon Sanderson. Then over here we have The Art of Howl's Moving Castle which is my favourite Studio Ghibli film and The Art of the Cat Returns which is Lee's favourite Studio Ghibli film. And here we have our little Heathy and his paw prints. And that is it for this shelf. In terms of items, I've got a little cat candle holder here, a little tray which is made of shells I think, I'm not sure, a fan and a little eagle jewellery holder thing. And that's it for that shelf. Okay, and finally we have the bottom two shelves. Bottom shelf is just a load of filing stuff. I'm not going to go into that, that's really boring. And then this shelf, I'm not going to go through each book. There's just a lot of children's books in here. So I will pan across it and you can have a look if you like. Just some highlights, I've got my full collection of the Mr. Men books back there. Some of my Portuguese books are here. Just so stories, my Winnie the Pooh, which is currently upside down. And that's about it. Now we are moving on to the bookshelf in the spare bedroom, which is the bookshelf that you will possibly recognise because this is the bookshelf that I generally film in front of. Most of it is, it's a new bookshelf, so most of it doesn't have anything in particular on it just now. But as before, I will start at the top, which is just some of Lee's Lego. That's his Lego shelf. Um, not much to say there. No real books on this one yet. We have a jar which used to have candles in, but I've burnt them all. A couple of uh, soft toys, a couple of um, tripods there at the back, a book sleeve, a cute little bottle of champagne that says drink me on it. Very sweet. And a pin flag that as yet has no pins on it because I don't have any pins to put on it. Now we have a shelf with actual books on it and this is the overview. There are also a lot of items on this shelf so I will take you through those. This is a clock that is from Disneyland so let me just move that out of the way. Then we have my illustrated copy of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them uh, by J.K. Rowling. Um, Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Hahn. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. And we have a little, you probably can't see this because it's the same colour as the shelf, but it's like a little turtle that you can stick a, si stick, a stick of incense in. And this is a decoration that I got in a fairy loot box that says it is not in the stars to hold our destiny but for, but in ourselves, which is a paraphrase of a Shakespeare quote. I'll just pop that on top there. Then we have The Toy Makers by Robert Dinsdale, Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw, Full Metal Alchemist Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 by Hiromu Arakawa. In terms of what I've read on this section of this shelf, I've only read Strange Practice and Volumes 1 to 5 of Full Metal Alchemist. The rest of the books here are on my TBR. I then have a compilation of cat short stories, a couple of cat poetry books. Here we have a sticker that says pro-choice, pro-feminism, pro-cats and a pin that says the same thing. And then moving across 
here we have some more items so on top here we have a teapot which is full of skittles fyi a couple of dolls from amsterdam they're just the traditional kissing dolls um, a metal bookmark there a little metal hippo which is very cute my granddad gave me that he loved hippos and a uh, iron on patch that says I am the reaper and death is my shadow which is a quote from Red Rising I believe and it was in a fairy loot box then behind those items we have three dark crowns one dark throne queens of fenburn and two dark reigns by kendar blake the first three of those here i have read and i have read the majority of two dark reigns but for now i have dnf'd it although i am not ruling out going back to it then over here we have some more of those japanese dolls which again i don't know what they're actually called but they are very cute and these two smaller ones are actually key rings as well but i'm not going to use them as key rings because i've got a lot of key rings and i think that they're just a bit cuter sat here on my shelf in front of my chinese style box up here i have my magnetic bookmarks from my December fairy loot box which were missing but have since arrived in the post so we have a dragon and a dragon queen and then on top here we have my Dutch copy of um, The Prisoners of Azkaban at Harry Potter uh, by J.K. Rowling and The Atlantis Code by Charles Brockow and I have not read that one and clearly I haven't read the Dutch version of Harry Potter because I don't speak Dutch. And then we have this shelf which I think the majority is stuff that I have read. Oh actually no scratch that no it's not. <laughs> so here we have the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. So we've got Northern Lights, The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass which I just completed a reread of and really enjoyed. Here we have a Minnie Mouse keyring and some bookmarks here. So this is the Dragon's bookmark from the December Fairy Loot box. We have a 3D, I don't know if that will show. It's a 3D bookmark, I really love that one. It's got a cute pink ribbon. Ribbon? No, that's a tassel, Sophia. Um, one of the, just the standard book depository bookmarks. A fabric bookmark, a figurine that my grandma brought me back from New Zealand, uh, we have another magnetic bookmark here and we have my Dutch kissing dolls in a snow globe, so cute, and uh, one of the um, coasters from the November fairy loot box I believe. Anyway, back to the books. So we have got, usually up here, we have the Queen of the Tearling, but that's my current read, so it's not there at the moment. And then we have the Fate of the Tearling and the Invasion of the Tearling, although I think those might be the wrong way around. I think this is book two and that's book three. I don't know. I'll let you know at some point. Um, then we've got The Bitter Kingdom and The Crown of Embers by Ray Carson, which are part of The Girl of Fire and Thorns series but if you watched my December haul or Christmas haul you will know that my grandma got confused and thought that this short stories collection for the girls of fire and thorns was actually book one it's not so I need to pick up book one before I start this series then here we have vicious and vengeful by V.E. Schwab like I said, I haven't read any of those yet, apart from The Queen of the Tearling, which I'm currently reading. Vicious, I have read. Vengeful, I have yet to read. The Dark Vault is a bind-up of 
uh, The Archived and The Unbound by V.E. Schwab, which are books one and two in a trilogy, actually, which I didn't realise. I thought it was a duology, but actually it was meant to be a trilogy, and then book three didn't get picked up by the publisher. So that series is actually unfinished, which is really disappointing. I haven't read book two yet, which is The Unbound, and I do plan to, but I really hope it doesn't end on a cliffhanger because that would really suck. And I also hope it doesn't suffer from middle book syndrome where, you know, in a lot of middle books, nothing really happens. So that would, that would be a shame. Anyway, City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab, which I have read. Scythe and Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, which I have also read. The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison, which I have not yet read. The Long Walk by Stephen King, writing as Richard Bachman, which I have recently finished, so that will be in my January wrap-up video. Ditto for Fire and Heist by Sarah Beth Durst. The Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephson is an advanced reader copy that was included in the December Fairy Loot box. I have yet to read it, but it is pretty high on my TBR, and I particularly want to make sure that I get to this one before it is released in June so that I can let you guys know my thoughts in case you're interested in it. Circle of Shadows by... Oh, that's helpful. The author's name isn't written by Evelyn Skye. Is it Evelyn? Yeah, Evelyn Skye. Um, that was the January fairy loot book, so I have not read that yet because I literally unboxed that yesterday. So I will link that for you in case you're interested in that video. Uh, will Lavender's Obedience, which is another advanced reader copy that I received when I was in school and I don't believe that I've actually read it but I read the um, synopsis of it recently and it actually did sound pretty interesting so I've got it on this shelf because it will remind me to read it. And then we have two copies of Brandon Sanderson's Skyward, the copy that I bought myself or pre-ordered for myself and then the copy that was included in the November fairy loot box which has these lovely yellow sprayed edges and because I have two copies I have the sprayed edges on display rather than the spine because the spine on both is actually the same because the fairy loot box did also include the UK edition cover and that is it for this shelf now I'm just quickly going to speed through these bottom sh two shelves for the sake of completeness because there's not a lot going on here. I have the actual hardback copy of Requiem for the Sun by Elizabeth Hayden, which is part of the Symphony of Ages series. I'm in the process of reading that one. I'll probably need to start it again, to be honest, by the time I get round to finishing it. But um, that's just sat there as a reminder. I then have a couple of the tarot cards from the December fairy loot box, a fairy scoop there, and an empty fairy loot box with some of the artwork sat underneath for safekeeping because I want to get them framed and put them on this wall that is very bare and sits right next to me when I'm filming and really really annoys me because it's just so boring to look at so that's my plan there. Then down on the bottom shelf I just have my lamp and a couple of pieces of artwork that Lee and I haven't got around to putting up yet and that is it for this bookcase and that's it for my bookshelf tour thank you so so much for watching if you liked this video and want to see more like this from me then do think about hitting that subscribe button i'd be so so grateful and i hope to see you again soon thanks bye